Walmart to pick up my order. Unfortunately, I can't go to the Walmart that's around me because they never have anything. I'm sure a lot of you all understand that. So I have to do a 21 mile ride to a different Walmart in a different town to uh, get all the products that I wanted to get. You see, it's hurricane season. As you all know, I've done some uh, uh, hurricane videos and everything else, and I wanted to top off some of my supplies. Uh, you know, hurricane season rolling around in a couple of weeks. They did talk about yesterday, they were talking about a uh, tropical depression that might develop in the Gulf. But I didn't see anything on the news today about it, so I don't know where that's going. But the whole key is you got to be prepared. So we're just doing a little cruise. I've never done one of these, so I figured oh, I'll give it a shot, see how it turns out. Not sure how the camera's going to react with the noise and everything and vibrations. But one of the first things that you really have to think about is when a hurricane is rolling around, folks, is, well, what's the first thing to go? Your generator. <clears throat> Your generators are always the first to go at the store. Second, the next thing is batteries. Next thing you know, all the batteries and stuff are gone. So you just don't know what's going to happen. You have to be prepared. You have to be prepared before the storm. Because once they announce, or you see that a storm is hitting somewhat in your way, everything is going to be depleted in the stores. So you may want to get out and try to get some of your supplies now. Because there's always that mad rat rush right at the, you know, when hurricane season hits. And the first hurricane season of the year, the next thing you know, boom, you know, the generators are gone, batteries are gone, flashlights are gone, um, all that kind of stuff. And then it starts going into your water, your, your canned goods, and all that type of stuff. And everybody always waits to the last minute to do their hurricane shopping. At least it seems that way. Nobody likes to be prepared. Now they have started pushing the preparedness on our local TV down here in Florida. You know, they want people to be prepared. They want people to start going through your supplies and all that kind of stuff. But people just don't heed the warning. A lot of people live in disbelief that it's not going to happen to them. You know what I'm saying? But we just need to be prepared. You just have to really sit back and take the time, go through, see what you have, especially if you live in a hurricane prone area, make sure you have batteries, make sure you have flashlights, make sure they work, you know? I mean, you could put brand new batteries in, what if the bulbs blow? Make sure you have spare bulbs. You know, if, if you have flashlights that you can take the, the bulbs and stuff out, well, then by all means, take the bulb, you know, get replacement bulbs. Because you may drop it or something and it may break. But it's a beautiful morning. I mean, you never think that, you know, anything is wrong or anything could be brewing anywhere or, you know, anything's going to happen. You know, I mean, there's not a cloud in the sky this morning. It's 71 degrees. It's a beautiful morning for a ride. So, that's what we're doing. But if you live in a hurricane-prone area, put in the comments down below. What are some of the things that you would like to see in your preps? Is there, is there something that you would like to add to your hurricane preps? Do you have a favorite object in your hurricane apps that you always go to during any type of a storm? What could that be? Put that in the comments below because it might help some people out. You know, there's a lot of people at least moving to this state in Florida. I mean, there's just, as fast as they're building homes, folks, their people are moving in. They're buying these houses up. The market down here is just, it, it's a, um, 
a seller's market, definitely. If you wanted to sell your house right now, you could throw it on the market, and I guarantee you, if you were putting your house out there for $300,000, I guarantee you, you're going to get at least close to four for it because people are getting in a bidding war, especially if you live in a nice neighborhood or a well-developed neighborhood and everything else with a lot of amenities around. You know, people are jumping on that stuff. I've heard all kinds of stories from a lot of my different customers on my route. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are selling and getting out, but there's a lot of people that are coming in, you know, especially from New York, New Jersey, uh, those type of areas. They're all moving down here to Florida. And then the rest of us, you know, we're just trying to figure out how to get the hell out of here. But, you know, I mean, everything takes time. You have to try to put a plan together if you want, if that's something that you're looking to do. You have to really check out areas. You have to make sure that wherever it is you want to go, it's going to be worth the move. What are the benefits? You know, you have to do the pros and cons list. Now, I'm sure a lot of you uh, older folks have heard of the pros and cons list. And for all you younger folks that haven't, that's where you put a list together and you do pros and cons. What is the pros of me relocating to a certain area? What are the cons of me relocating to a certain area? It could be anything from the jobs, the stores, you know, a lot of people are dependent on, you know, being able to order anything online and have it delivered to their home, which is a very nice feature. I mean, we have that here. You can go on Grubhub, DoorDash, Walmart, Kmart, it does, doesn't matter who. Not Kmart, but, you know, Target, I mean, all these places. You know, you can get all your different products delivered right to your home. You don't even have to leave the house. But is that something you're willing to give up to have freedom and security and being able to maybe purchase some land to have your own homestead, grow your own foods, not be so dependent on the government and grocery stores, supply chains, and everything else. That's just something you really have to ponder and think about. You know, sometimes we all just, we fall in the rut of everyday life. And you sit there and you think you got it made in the shade and everything else. And then when the shit hits the fan, well, it really isn't that great now, is it? And you're asking yourself, was that a good decision? You might get blinded by the sun here in a second. I'm sorry, folks. <clears throat> on I-95 South. We're going past right here where they're putting in uh, a new high-speed rail system here in Florida. It's going to run from Miami all the way to Orlando International Airport. Uh, supposedly, from what they say, you're going to be able to hop on a train from the Orlando Airport and be in Miami in three hours. It's a multi-billion dollar project and uh, it's all the, the bright lines. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. You know, technology, everything's changing. is faster than, you know, what some people like. Faster than what a lot of people like, really. Um, but back to being prepared. You know, your biggest thing is, and relocating, your biggest thing that you really want to think about is how it's going to benefit you, how it's going to benefit your family, how it's going to benefit what you want out of your life, what you want to do with you and your family, and how you want to live if you decide you don't want to be so dependent on all the supply chains because we've all seen how they can be so easily disrupted, right? And how easily everything can come to a halt. If 
you have the availability and if you lived, say, in a country setting where you could have a garden, maybe some chickens, um, maybe sheep, goat, lambs, uh, maybe a cow, you know, anything like that, where you could be self-reliant, that might be a good thing. Yeah, it's not for everybody. You know, I mean, a lot of people like the city life. And there's, there are pros and cons to the city life. Is it a place where I'd really want to be if uh, SHTF took place? No, I would not. But unfortunately, right now, that's where I am uh, pretty much stuck. Not that I'm not trying to figure out a way how to get the hell out of here, but... Like I said, everything has to fall in place and everything has to basically come together and you have to have a plan and a place to go. You just don't pack up and throw caution to the wind and throw a dart at a dartboard and say, well, this is where I want to end up. And it doesn't really work that way. That's it. It's, that's very poor planning. When you're doing something that's major and it's a major move, well, you want to make sure that you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's and checking them twice, if you get what I'm saying. Sometimes, I'm sure some of you have heard this saying, the grass isn't always greener on the other side, folks. So you have to make sure that what you're doing is what you really want to be doing. And if you're going to put your hard-earned money into it to buy uh, land or property, or even just a home out in the woods that's already pretty much set up and ready to go. Well, you just got to make sure you're doing your homework and make sure that it's going to cover all your basic needs. Don't buy some little piece of property that's not going to supply you with what you want to do. It's kind of ridiculous to spend the money that way. I'm having my morning coffee as we're driving and talking. Boy, it is a beautiful morning. Uh, my car says it's uh, 74 degrees. So in Florida standards, that's a pretty cool morning. When I got up this morning, it was uh, 67 at my house. Which for this time of year is very cool. And I will take it all day long because another week or so and the 90s are going to roll in. And we won't see cooler temperatures until November just the way it goes you live down here and you know the bonus to living down here is if you have solar anything solar it works very well because the Sun is very hot and very bright yeah we get the afternoon showers and thunderstorms but most of the day you're gonna be able to charge anything you want to charge you could run your homestead and anything else if this is where you choose to live now there is different parts of Florida where you can move to and you can be way out in the country and with nobody around but it's finding some of those areas very slim to none they just going like hotcakes because after the, the uh, pandemic hit you know a lot of people wanted to get the hell out of Dodge and they just wanted to get away from everybody else and move on down the road So we're just kind of cruising along. I want to just have a little morning chat as we drive to pick up our supplies, our regular groceries also. This wasn't just all for hurricane preparedness. You know, I have to have food to eat during the week also. Um, you know, I take my lunch every day, try to save money. Um, there's, see, there's a little things like that that you can, you, you, everybody can do, you know, if you work, and you have to buy lunch every day, do the math how much that's costing you per week, per month, per year. And then take a look at how much money you can save by just bringing your own lunch, your own drinks. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with going out maybe once a week and having lunch with, you know, your co-workers or whatever else. Well, that's pretty cool, you know, but to do it every day, it gets pretty expensive. You know, by the time you order your meal, let's just say, 
go out and you have lunch and you have, you know, a drink, an iced tea or a shake, or maybe you can even have an alcoholic beverage. By the time you leave a tip and stuff, you're looking at, you know, anywhere between 15, 20 bucks. And that's per day. I can bring a lot of food per day for 20 bucks. You know, and I don't buy cheap lunch meat. I buy boar's head. Um, I buy really good bread, wraps. I bring my own chips, my own drinks, snacks. You know, because with my job, you never know when you're going to get done and when you're going to come home. And lately, with the way that people have been ordering, that's just a whole nother subject, if you ask me, folks. I mean, the amount of pe the stuff that people are ordering, and we all know that they're using their credit cards. So we're just racking up more debt and debt and debt, and people need to wake up and smell the roses because all these bills are going to come due. And if something happens, God forbid, with the whole infrastructure of our economics, you know, it could be a very bad thing. I hope nothing like that happens. I, I really do. I mean, I hope that everything stabilizes and, uh, you know, we, we get back to a more stable environment in our government as far as money-wise and inflation and everything else, but that's not going to happen. They, they keep spending trillions and trillions. Every time there's a new bill that comes out, it's trillions of dollars. You know, no longer do we have bills that are just, you know, in the billions or millions, anything like that. Everything is in the trillions and trillions of dollars. And somebody eventually is going to have to pay for this. And it's going to break down to where the dollar bill is going to be worthless because of this. You know, we can keep printing money. The more money we print to pay for all this stuff that they want to do, well, the more we go into debt. Credit card debt is at the highest that it has been since I think the article that I read was 2008. You know, we were very fortunate. We got out from underneath our credit card debt. At this point, I do not own a credit card. I have a bank card that I use as a credit card. So if I have cash in the bank and it's something that I want, I buy it and I pay cash for it. If it's something, a big ticket item, I save my money. You know, I mean, that's what a sensible prepper will do. You know, you, you don't want to be caught up in, you know, having all these bills. So if there's a big, big ticket item that I like and I want to try to save for, which I do have a couple things that I'm working on, might take me a little time. But you know what? I have things to get by. I have things that will work for my needs right now in an emergency type situation. Yes, there's things that I want to add to my situation to make my life a lot easier and extend my survival. But I'm going to have to save for those items because they do cost a lot of money. So the thing is, is you just got to play it smart. You got to try to catch the deals. You got to try to get out there and make sure that you're doing what you can. Make sure that, hey, you know, I don't need that right now. Put it on my list of things that I want to add to my survival supplies. And the next thing you know, well, there you go. Well, I'm almost here ready to pick up my order. I hope everybody enjoyed having a little chit chat this morning on the way to Walmart to pick up some supplies to top off some of my hurricane supplies. I did get some uh, more batteries. Uh, I do order a lot of my batteries on Amazon, uh, but I wanted uh, a few special batteries because see, everything doesn't just take your standard battery. So you need to pay attention to that. And, and um, Walmart had a pretty good deal on some of those. I did pick up a couple of new flashlights, um, cases of water, things of this nature. Um, of course, beer, but that's not for the emergency supply. That's for me. So, all right. You all have a great Sunday. I'm going to try to get this video posted today. And...
I hope everybody is staying prepped, staying ready, stay safe. And remember, thrive to survive, people. That is our new slogan. If you haven't noticed, that's going to be starting to come out in all my videos. I like that slogan, thrive to survive, because this way here, we all can get through the storm. We all work together. We can all benefit. So until next time, folks, I'll catch all of you on the flip side.